we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Toe the Line with me, George Glinski, joined today by a very special guest fighting at BKB23. It's UFC veteran and former Cage Warriors lightweight champion, Fish Chris Fishko. My bad. How are we doing, Chris? I'm good, you know. I'm good. Um, yeah, say, same old. Feeling great. Good man, good man. Well, look, you've had a really, really successful mixed martial arts career. I don't know if it's fully over yet, but you're making the transition to bare knuckle boxing, so the obvious question is, why BKB? Why now? Um, I've, I've, you know what? I've seen a lot of people get into it, and I think um, if you look at my MMA, in my MMA, I'm, I'm always going forward, so pushing forward, and BKB, it's it's ninety percent of it's people pushing forward, so what me and going at each other, um, and I, I don't know. I just think the time was right in my life. Um, I wanted to do a little bit of a change. It's sometimes it's hard to fit in, you know, five hours training for MMA fights and stuff, and it really takes over your life. And then you know, once you've got, you know, a decent record, um, unless it's something like a big promotion, it's hard to get fights. Do what I mean? So with this, it's like I'm the new kid, new kid on the block again. Um, and and yeah, it's it's you can it fits into my life a lot more. While, mm. still doing, while still getting the chance to fight against high-level so competition. Do you, do you feel that excitement, that excitement you felt when you first started off in mixed martial arts? You know, it's a new venture, a new challenge. Yeah, definitely. Like, I've, I've had lots of people, like, people in the bare knuckle boxing community and people out saying, oh, you're going to do really well. But I think this is part of the excitement. You know, if no one knows that. You know, I haven't stepped in there yet. It's... Um, it's going into the unknown, and like you've seen a lot of good pro boxers transition over into that, and they haven't done too good. You know, you can't you can't sit there and use your jab and try and get into the fight as it goes along. You know, three two minute rounds. As soon as that bell goes, it's go. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing um, seeing if yeah what it brings if my chin holds up and if my hands hold up. <laughs> well, you've always been known as a very durable fighter, um, and and. Really underrated in the stand-up. A lot of people talk about your jiu-jitsu being a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Everyone talks about Chris Fishgold, the grappler. But you know, you've you've stood there with Calvin Cater. You've stood there with da Daniel Tamer. You know, you you've you've fought very high-level kickboxers, and and you've come through with a great deal of success. So, do you feel like this is an opportunity to really show people your striking skills? Yeah, yeah. Well, like you just said, there, I I truly believe for him. I, me, me and my career, I think about 19 wins, four losses and one draw. Them losses, bar me last one where I fucked up the weight cut, um, that wasn't, I wasn't getting outclassed. I was winning them fights and literally just got caught. So what I mean, so um, I, 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 I know what I can do in the stand-up. And, you know, like, it's like we were just touched on then, um, you know, boxers and people doing pads, they get used to holding the hands on the chin and, you know, you, you can't do that, you know, you get hit in the temple and stuff with bare fists, you're going out and you, I've been a pro f uh, in MMA for the past 13 years so I've had got used to holding my hands here, yeah, constantly mm. as opposed to here yeah, like a boxer so I do think it will it will suit me and the fact that um, you know, I'm, I'm quite small um, yeah, you'll see me throwing a lot of them overhand rights and <laughs> fingers crossed, if, if they land people will be hitting the floor but yeah, um, I'm just excited to get in there now and just um, see what it's all about. And, and you've mentioned that mixed martial arts fighters have transitioned really well to this sport. Why do you think that is? The the smaller glove, you, you mentioned the guard. What, what do you think has been the main success behind mixed martial arts transitions? Um, I, I, do you know what? Do you, who knows, really? I, I think it could be a few things. I think, um, obviously, with them little gloves, we're getting used to moving our head out the way and yeah. we're blocking it right. Do you know what I mean? Um, whereas boxing, it's literally hand on your chin. But if I put both my hands up here, you know, there's still a big part that's getting through, yeah. uh, which, you know, after you've after you've done it a couple of years, you sort of get used to how to defend that. Um, and I think also, I think a lot of MMA fighters, the go-forward fighters, do you know yeah. what I mean? You can, you can get boxing styles, you know, stay on the outside, you know, Use the jab. Uh, amateur boxing's more you know, used to be more points, more side on. Where I think this is, you get like you land one of them, a uh, big hook or a uh, right with knuckles. People going to sleep. So what I mean, you've even seen it with some jabs. Like 
the jabs don't even have near to have nothing in them and you're cutting people up. So I, I think that's why they transition over um, quite well, to be fair. Um, that said, there has been some good boxers come over, but the, the, it seems like the MMA fighters are doing, making a lot more noise in it than the ex-pro boxers. Mm. So I, I read an article, I think, in the Liverpool Echo about you and your transition to bare boxing, and it mentioned that you'd spoken to Ricardo Franco. Is that who sort of persuaded you to get into bare originally? Yeah, well, you know what? I'm not quite, quite a lot of bare knuckle fighters that, you know, transitioned over and got into it that time. Yeah, I've got a friend, um, Shredder, he, he fights on it. And, oh, um, Shredder. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. he's a good good lad, Paul. So Paul, Paul fights on it. Um, Ricardo Franco, obviously, um, we touched on him then. But um, can you hear me, yeah? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, froze a bit there. So, yeah. So I've, I've had, like, I've got a lot of friends that have um, been on it and, you know, um, win, lose, or draw. They put up a highlight of the actual fight. Every fight's a fucking war, do you know what I mean? I haven't seen one fight where I can say, oh, I wouldn't go and pay to watch that. Mm. So, so, like I've said that to everybody, fucking anybody that's coming to watch, I've said, you know, regard, like, I appreciate people coming to watch because I'm on it, but even if it was fucking just, say, 14 guys that I've never heard of, mm. I'll still come and pay because it's bare knuckle boxing. You're, you're in for watching. If you want to watch fights, you're going to be getting fights. There's not going to be none of this holding on shit or running away shit. Because, yeah. like I said, it takes one shot and that's it. People are, people are hitting the floor, aren't they? So it's right, Ryan saying you've been watching Bernacle Boxing for quite some time. Who, who, are you, who are you looking at particularly? Who, who particularly excites you? What style? Well, obviously in, in this promotion, it's um, Jimmy Sweeney. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he's beat everyone, hasn't he? You know what I mean? And um, he's... he's the, the same as style, he's quite short, and just the way he fights and goes in with people. So, like, that's their people I'm looking at, seeing where they get to success from. But the same as I've done with MMA, you need to study everything. You know, if you get um, a stronger fighter, a bigger straight, a bigger fighter with better technique than you, mm. you can still beat them. You just need to be fucking smart about it, Joe. What I mean. So, I think um, as long as you've got good fights, IQ, you can beat anybody. I don't want to be that guy that's had fucking 100 fights and um, so can't, like, 50-50 record and can't spell his own name. You want to be yeah. the guy that's had, like, you know what I mean? You want to be the guy that's had, like, 200 fights. Yeah. He's won most of them and he's still switched on, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. The, um, yeah, it's just studying it at the moment, studying it, seeing, um, seeing how people do because... Yeah, there's lots of bare knuckle promotions popping up now all over the world. Um, I think I think I can name like four, three or four just in the UK. So what I mean? So, um, yeah, yeah, it's just I think it started like when MMA started, and you know, back in the day, you know, with the UFC is coming on top, but then you've got other promotions that are sort of who's going to come on top. I feel like it's going to be the same. So I just wanted to get in it pretty much. Early, early days of trying to make my name in this before it blows up. Definitely. Is, so is this, am I right in saying this is a, a career path? Are, are you are you continuing with MMA or are you just focusing on bare-knuckle boxing? No, no, I'm still continuing in MMA, to be honest. Um, I've done this, well, now I've been a pro for 13 years, mm. but I'm still only a, I'm 30 this this next year. So I've had a 10 pro when, when I just turned 17. Yeah. So, um, but because I haven't fought in like a year and a half, and because my fights, I have been smart with them. Mm. You know, I've lost four times and then four times and never took tremendous amounts of damage. I still feel pretty switched on. So mm. I'm, I'm hoping I can get another 14 years out of it. But like, like I said, I might be able to train for fucking, let's be honest, high level MMA fights. I've already got there. So with my record, the names I'm getting, I might be able to train for like three years, four at most, and it's got to be really fucking hard. But with the burn up or boxing, I guarantee you, I could get seven out a year. Mm. Less straining on your body. You know, I know what I need to work on for it. Do you know what I mean? It's your fucking hands are not getting hit in the cardio. Do you know what I mean? It's not like it's not like you're looking at opponents and going, right, he might try and take you down here, or you need to watch the job. It's it's I think it just makes it a lot easier. But like you touched on before, I'm a black belt, and I think doing the burn knuckle, it will only help me MMA for when I get them big fights. So it's just tick over with this, start off slow, see where it goes. But I'm definitely, uh, I wouldn't say I'm picking either one. I'm 
the, my career path is fighting, whether that's bare knuckle boxing or MMA. I just want to keep on fighting. So what I'm here. Want to be the old man that can fucking say to his grandkids, I had like 200 fights. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. And you mentioned longevity there. Um, a key part of bare knuckle boxing and, and BKB, the, the company particularly, is same day weigh-in. So obviously you mentioned that you struggled with weight in the UFC. They expect you to cut particularly low, 145, not your natural weight class, you're more of a 155er um, yourself. But how nice is it to do same day weigh-ins? Are you a big advocate for them? Yeah. Well, so far, yeah, you know, fucking, I haven't really started dieting yet for this, so it's, <laughs> it's obviously, though, it's, it's enjoyable that I can enjoy focusing on the fight and, yeah. you know, picturing the fight in my head and I can watch fights, you know, with a full belly rather than, you know, getting beat up in the gym and then you come home and then you're eating fucking rabbit food just to get to fucking, dog. You know, it's it's not... You need to love the sport if you're going to do that. You need to absolutely love it. Because if you don't 100% love it, you're, you're not going to stay in it. So what I mean, I think this, uh, it's given me the love back for combat. And, you know, I don't need to be as harsh on your body. You know, cutting, cutting stupid amounts of weight, doing fucking nine k in a week, that's, it's not good on the body. So what I mean, it's it's ridiculous, really. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think the ADs have got it done. I think you'll see less damage to people as well, Joe. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. And and 79 kilograms, a bit higher than usual. How's the body feeling? Obviously, you haven't started your, your diet, but how's the body feeling around that weight? I, I always look at decent shape, to be fair. I've, I've put a lot more muscle on since uh, the UFC last year, but um, I felt like then I was keeping a lot off because mm. I knew I was fighting. I knew I was fighting at 66, so it was pointless me lifting weights and going up to like 85, knowing that. I'm just gonna kill myself to get down. So I've I've enjoyed just being able to um, not eat what I want, but yeah, enjoy myself. So so what I mean, um, you know what it's like if you're fucking starving, you're dieting. You always see people dieting. Yeah. Like probably eight times out of ten, they're not happy. So what I mean, I'm I'm happy now. I'm smiling. So what I mean, <laughs> all I'm thinking about is fucking going in next week and just. I've, having a war with this guy and yeah yeah I'm, I, I'm enjoying this hopefully in the future pro- don't get me wrong I'm not going to be 79 for every single fight yeah I'm starting this because this was like a sort of spare of the moment thing I never wanted to do it but I messaged them quite late and was like can you get me on the card and he was like fuck of course we can get you on the card so yeah. I will I will I will be a little bit more serious though what I mean um but yeah just before Christmas and that this is perfect for me yeah and, and obviously it's John Doody. Um, 10 days away today. It's the 10th of November at the time of recording. So have you had a chance? I don't know if you're the type of guy to analyse your opponent. Have you had a chance to look at John? What do you make of him? Um, I am actually the type of guy to analyse my opponent, but I'm not going to lie with, with this. Um, I haven't um, I haven't found much on him, for one. Yeah. And you know, I, I find, I'm not sure what it's going to be like with the boxing, but I pretty much know that. With the MMA, it's not like, oh, he might take me down or he's going to try and do this or he goes for this sub. With John, I pretty much know it's boxing. He's mm-hmm. going to try and punch me in the face. Just, you know, make sure <laughs> I punch him more than he punches me. That's pretty much it. Do you know what I mean? Um, once, I, once I start getting some of the... Taking nothing away from John, because, um, you know, like I said, it only takes one punch to change the fight. But once I start getting some of the bigger names, that's when I'll need to start... A hundred percent of what I mean. But yeah. Definitely, definitely. So for people that haven't seen you fight, I'm sure that the majority of people that are watching this interview will have seen you fight, but what can they expect of you come fight night? Well, particularly, what can they expect of you in Bare Knuckle? We haven't actually seen you, so it is actually a valid question. Um, same as the MMA, swinging for the fences, you know, big overruns, big hooks, and um, trying to just put on a show, try, trying to have a war without without needing to hesitate that someone might take me down or thinking, shit, I'm going to gas in two minutes because I've cut that much weight, you know. Um, this is, I feel great, to be honest. I feel great. So, um, yeah, hopefully you will see me fucking winning. I'm pretty confident at that. But apart from that, it's, I learned this with the MMA. It's it's not about the winning or losing. It's about the spectator. spectating. Uh, if you can do something in a fight and come Monday morning, people are speaking about you, you know, yeah. that's, that's winning that. So 
win, lose or draw, as long as people are speaking, you're winning, you're going to keep getting paid and you're going to keep on getting better fights. So, yeah, it's the entertainment business. So hopefully I'll be going out to entertain you. Definitely, definitely. You know, we're really looking forward to this. When I heard this had come through, I was just over the moon. We were we were supposed to be um, together on a mixed martial arts show. We're here at BKB. So in 10 days time, we get to finally meet in person and, and talk about the fight. But um, finally, sponsors and thanks. Obviously, you'll have a fair few people to thank for your journey so far. Um, so everyone, obviously, I'm not with um, Next Generation anymore, but I, I always thank him. Um, Paul for everything he's done for me you know, over the years. He got me from a kid that's never punched yes. to a UFC fighter. So I'll always thank Paul Cyan Ellis. Uh, other than that, Aspire, uh, Aspire MMA, uh, Dean Garner, you know, Phil Turner. And uh, Scramble, Scramble of Paul. They've been with me since day one, Joe. Yeah, I had a couple of bumps in the road coming through my MMA career and um, they stuck by me through and through. So, you know, check them out, Scramble. I might even wear some Scramble shorts. I may have gotten that, but, but buy some of the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, mate. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time and, um, yeah, speak to you in 10 days' time. Thanks. Thanks, you, mate. See ya.